The woman you're viewing is the beautiful Katrina Vetrano, 30 years old. She was going on a regular jog like she do normally in Howard Beach, Queens. But on this day in August 2016, she was beaten and murdered, strangled to death. Six months later, they have now found the man that they claim killed her. 20-year-old Chanel Lewis. But my Scooby senses tells me otherwise. Too real for TV exclusive. 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 A long-awaited arrest after six months. Police say they finally found the man they believe is responsible for the brutal murder of a jogger in Queens. The demon must get his justice. Oh, yeah. And we will see to it. New tonight, we are learning more about the suspect accused in this random and vicious attack. Good evening. I'm Sandra Bookman. And I'm Joe Torres. Just hours ago, Eyewitness News was there for that suspect's arraignment. Police say 20-year-old Chanel Lewis raped and murdered Karina Vetrano while she was out for an afternoon run. Uh, tonight, his first court appearance was full of emotion and outburst. Eyewitness News reporter Lucy Yang is in Kew Gardens tonight with the very latest. Lucy. Well, Sandra and Joe, as this case begins its journey through the criminal court system, we're learning more about the 20-year-old man who stands accused. The victim's family calls him a savage killer, but the defendant's father insists he is a gentle soul incapable of such a horrible crime. Even the police admit he has no violent record. These are the two faces of Chanel Lewis. It was an emotionally explosive arraignment tonight in Queens as the victim's family, the Vetranos, unleashed months of agony and fury at the defendant's family. The outburst continuing outside the courtroom. He's a demon. He's a demon. Chanel, why'd you do it? Why'd you kill her? 20 year old Chanel Lewis now stands accused of brutally killing 30 year old Karina Vetrano. Even strangers gathered outside the precinct to condemn him. Last August, Karina went for a jog in the marshy area near her Howard Beach home, but never returned. Authorities say she was raped and savagely attacked. It also appears she fought until her last breath, and her bravery may have helped solve her own murder. Karina helped us identify this person. She had the DNA in her, under her nails. She had touched DNA on her, on her back and there was more DNA on a cell phone. In addition to forensic evidence, investigators say the 20-year-old confessed. Okay, very detailed statements that I don't want to go into right now. It, it appears to be a chance encounter. I don't think there was any stalking. According to the complaint sheet, Lewis allegedly punched Karina about the face and head and strangled the victim around the neck, thereby causing her death. What kind of person is he? He's a wonderful young man, wonderful young man. Do you believe he could have committed this crime? No, you, you, you would not have. Chanel Lewis's father tonight standing by his son's innocence. Is there any mental disability here or any emotional challenges that he suffers from? No, I'm not going, I'm not going any further. We're told Lewis did not work and that he lived with his mother in East New York. He is now being charged with second degree murder. No mention yet on the complaint sheet of any sexual assault charges. His next court appearance is later this month on the 21st. We're live outside the criminal court building in Queens. I'm Lucy Yang for Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Maroy. This is Too Real for TV. If this is your first time tuning in, please, please bear with me. Yes, I do go on conspiracy theories sometimes, and this is definitely one of those times. I've been watching this story over and over, and I can't help but notice the sloppy job the media is doing as usual. The media is uh, reporting false stories, but here's the deal. This young lady, Katrina Vetrano, 30 years old, was out jogging in Howard Beach, Queens, and she was strangled, killed, beaten and killed while jogging, body thrown in the, in the high bushes in the weeds. Six months later, six months later, 
Police have to do some deep diving undercover work. They say it led them to 20-year-old Chanel Lewis, who was living with his parents. Obviously, if you look at the video of Chanel, you could tell the man has some type of mental illness. Now, they say when they found Chanel, the DNA matched exactly. They got a, a DNA sample from him, volunteer, volunteered a DNA sample. They got a DNA sample from him, volunteer. They say that he gave a confession, which I find that hard to believe. He gave a confession with great details, which could have been pried out of him, I believe. Because this man's face, if you look at him, he does not look like the kind of guy that just confessed to murdering this white woman. Not to mention this white woman jogs every day, even though he's a man and she's a woman. She's 30, he's 20. He doesn't look strong enough to be strangling and killing this woman. But hey, first thing I want to let everybody know, yes, I am black. However, if this man did kill this woman, he is a piece of shit. He needs to do the rest of his life in jail. All the demons they call them is rightfully so. I want to tell you that first off. I'm on the side of righteousness. But with too many loopholes in this story, it just does not sound right to me. First off, they saying that this man has no criminal record, no violence in his background, none of that. But the news reported, and then they said when he gave a confession to the police chief, that he said he strangled the woman, he killed the woman, but he didn't say he did anything about sexual with her. Nothing sexual. However, the news reports say he raped her. That's what the news reports are saying, they raped her. You got to listen to this. Listen to the news reports say he raped her. And then they come back and say no sexual assaults, no sexual assault charges have been filed. Raymond, police say 20-year-old Chanel Lewis raped and murdered Karina Vetrano. No mention yet on the complaint sheet of any sexual assault charges. Boom. But here's the thing that kills me on how they found him. So because he has no criminal record, he has no DNA on file, right? But a couple months prior to the murder, in May, a Lieutenant John Russo remember a call about a man behaving suspiciously in Howard Beach, where he lives. He called the police on a man that was living suspiciously. The police showed up. Russo wasn't there. He wasn't there. The squad car showed up, took the man's name, information. Ten days ago, Lieutenant Russo remembered the episode and told detectives. They went over there to go ask the man questions. Somehow they was able to get a confession out of him after six months. They was able to get him to volunteer DNA. And boom, perfect match. Now, let me let y'all watch the, watch the uh, news clip. New information tonight about the young man accused of killing a Queens jogger. Police say Chanel Lewis confessed to strangling Karina Vetrano at a park in Queens in August. CBS 2's Jessica Layton live outside the suspect's home in East New York. Jessica. And Maurice, police have been here outside the home since Saturday when Chanel Lewis allegedly gave that disturbing and detailed confession. Now, tonight, his family is saying he's being framed, but authorities say it is his DNA they found under the fingernails of Karina Vetrano after she fought for her life. What was his mental state? I don't want to say anything. Excuse me. Did he do this? No comment. Leave me alone. Pushing a cart full of laundry, this relative of Chanel Lewis was clearly agitated by the attention this case has caused the family. Earlier, though, Lewis's sister adamantly defended the 20 year old who's facing murder charges. To the family, I'm sorry for their loss, but they have the wrong person being born. But police say Lewis's own DNA led them right to his doorstep, a break that began with what the chief of detectives called a deep data dive. Big case, 1,700 uh, investigators. Reports filed. Lieutenant John Russo, who has family in Howard Beach, recalled making a 911 call months before the murder for a suspicious person in the area. That person was Chanel Lewis. We went to speak to him on February 2nd at his home in East New York, and where he voluntarily gave the uh, gave the sample, DNA sample. Police say the sample matched the DNA found under Karina Vetrano's fingernails from fighting for her life in Spring Creek Park. The person that 
killed her is living next door to me. Lewis has no criminal history, but he does have a history of mental problems, including an incident in May 2011 at a New York City high school. Sources say Lewis admitted to hating women and allegedly told the school administrator he wanted to stab and kill female students. Police have been outside the suspect's home since Saturday when they say he confessed to strangling the Toronto after becoming enraged that she startled him as she ran through the park. A chance encounter that ended with the death of a beautiful young woman whose life held so much promise. Chanel Lewis is due back in court later this month. The Vetranos say you better believe they will be there. Reporting live in East New York, Brooklyn tonight, Jessica Layton, CBS 2 News. Now, here's the reason why I find like this is bullshit. This John Russo guy, you mean to tell me you just so happened to call the police on this guy that just so happened to be looking suspicious in the same neighborhood of the murder of the young lady? Really? Mm-hmm. This man has no criminal record, no violence, and then the news reports try to say that he said he was he was threatening women. But right here, Dr. Edward Dana, the executive director of Martin D. Poor School, said in a statement released Monday, there is no disciplinary record against him, nor are there any reports that he made threatening statements against other students. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if the news like the major national news outlets can make such great erroneous errors. If they can make such big mistakes in reporting news like this, that makes this man into a criminal and a demon and finding him guilty before he's even in front of a court, then how do we win? Now, this is the news. So imagine when you see people with their own little websites, such as myself, you go buy a domain, buy a server, get you a website, and you can put out whatever you want. I really feel sorry for this guy because the, because the legal system that he has on his side is not going to help him. And the, and the cool thing about it, when they start talking about DNA, okay, if they got a DNA sample from him, Who's to say they didn't take the DNA sample and plant it on the girl? We don't have any forensic sciences in the black community that could go back and follow up behind that shit. I hate it when they say DNA. And see, that's why they want to arrest every black man on earth to get his fingerprints. So they could somehow trace him to everything that's in his area if they can or they cannot pin him to it. They'll make you guilty to it. If they put your DNA on something, then what? You, you dead. Now we know they put bogus DNA on shit before. Look at the O.J. Simpson case. They put blood on gloves. That was untrue. All I'm saying is this. Once again, I want y'all to know. If this man did this to this young lady, he deserves every day he gets in jail. His family looks like a nice family. I don't know. They seem like Haitian descent. I don't know exactly. Somewhere from the Caribbeans. So this might be all new and strong to them. But he's from New York. He's a good kid. Never been charged with any, any crimes before. Never been arrested. And you mean to tell me the first case he got is a murder? A chance murder? You met a woman. You beat her and strangled her. No rape. No rape. Just beat, strangled, killed her. And left. And for six months you've just been hanging out at your mom's crib. Like nothing happened. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I would like to say let's stay tuned to this case, but we know how it's going to develop. If he can't get somebody, I mean, how you going to fight the DNA? How you going to fight DNA? Man, just look at this Look at this uh, drawing of the man they were looking for. Just look at this picture. Now, how, please tell me how was this the person you were looking for? How do you assume if you had no leads for six months, you never seen the person or nothing? How was this the person you were looking for? And if this is the person you're looking for, how in the hell does this match up with who you found? This doesn't look nothing like this dude. But somehow you got a description of a person you were looking for? Come on, man. I'm not buying it. Yeah, maybe I'm being a conspiracy theorist. I don't know. It just looks funny to me. I've watched this. I've watched several news clips on this, and it just looks funny. After six months, this is the guy you find. 
He's the only one with the matching, the exact matching DNA, huh? Okay, even the police chief said it wasn't a rape. He didn't confess to that. But somehow this guy confessed to everything. I don't buy it. Hey, man, y'all leave y'all comment at the bottom. Y'all tell me what you think. Am I tripping? You know, I always ask you, if I, am I tripping? If I'm tripping, tell me at the bottom in the comments, man. This ain't even a racial thing with me, man. Seriously. If this black dude did it, this black ass need to fry. Whether it was a white woman, a green woman, or another black woman, he needs to fry. He needs to be locked up forever. Period. I just don't think he did it. Too Real for TV. Like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Too Real for TV.com.